market, you not only make these cars like new, you make them better than new. I mean, this stops better, it handles better. Uh, I mean, everything is just better, and, it's, and it still looks stock. Uh, it really does handle like a sports car. I know that sounds silly, but don't knock it till you try it. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car featuring today my 1968 Pontiac Firebird Sprint. This is a car I've been looking, looking for for a long time, trying to find one of these. I think it's one of the rarest Pontiacs. If you've never heard of the Pontiac Sprint, well, let me tell you what it is. This, this is a little giveaway. See, it says 4.1 liter overhead cam. Overhead cam, 1968, what? Doesn't make any sense. You know, even Pontiac guys have never heard of this. Let's get right to it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There it is right there. Six cylinder. See that? PMD, Pontiac Motor Division. Uh, this was certainly the first, at least post-war, overhead cam six in America. Obviously, Jaguar had it since 1948, dual overhead cam. But this was a big deal. See, John DeLorean was a huge fan of the Jaguar XKE. And before he took over Pontiac, it had kind of a frumpy image. And he wanted to make an American version of an XKE, an American sports car. He went to General Motors and they said, look, we already got the Corvette, okay? We don't want to compete with that. Uh, put your idea in something else, Firebird, Camaro, whatever, okay. So he took essentially a Chevy 6. They developed an overhead cam engine for it. It's the first car overhead cam engine ever to have a rubber belt. It's got a rubber belt driving it. They made a sprint option. Now, when you bought the base Pontiac, this is the engine you got with, I think, a one-barrel carburetor. I think it made about 145, 150 horsepower. Uh, you had got headers. You got the hood tack. You got the four-speed transmission. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. I remember seeing in Hot Rod magazine about this Pontiac 6, and I just thought, wow, that's really different, because I like European cars, and there really weren't any high-performance six-cylinder American engines at the time, at least, that I, at least that I knew of then. So it was always in the back of my mind. The trouble was, by the time you ordered the four-barrel and all the high-performance options to make it a sprint, it cost more than the V8, and it didn't make as much horsepower. So they didn't sell a whole lot of these. The gentleman that, that bought this originally was in the Navy, and I think he ordered it through one of those programs where military people can get a discount, you know. So he got the six, he got power steering, power, a bunch of different options on it. He really outfitted exactly the way he wanted it, was the way I would have had it. Uh, so there it is. Um, it's only had a couple of owners. It's just such a rare car. We've sort of resto modded it. I'll, we'll show you that. Uh, I did some restoration blogs for the last couple of years. Uh, here, here are some updates on the car. Take a look. Now here's a car I've been looking for for a long time. This is a 1968 Pontiac Firebird. Now what makes it rare? Well, okay. Okay, it's got the hood tack, which I always like, ordered from a factory with tachometer on the hood. Four-speed transmission, most were three-speed. Uh, power steering and power brake, which is unusual. Uh, radio, convertible. This is a Pontiac Sprint. If you don't know what that is, well, let me show you what it is here. This is a six-cylinder overhead cam engine. This engine was John DeLorean's idea. He wanted a car to compete with the Jaguar XKE. So they come up with this 4.1 liter overhead cam straight six. The first time that had ever been done in America, overhead cam six cylinder engine. And normally this would be the low engine on the scale, you know. They came with a one barrel carburetor. Then they made a high performance version, 4.1 liter quadrajet four barrel carburetor high-performance camshaft. I think it was 215, 220 horsepower. But the thing that makes it cool is it's extremely lightweight, a lot lighter than the V8. So this thing really handles and drives nicely. The trouble was the high-performance Sprint 
was about the same price as the V8. So consequently, why well, get a six and you can get a V8? Well, this is 68 Firebird I told you about. Uh, we pulled the engine out, went through it. It's really worn out, well over 100,000 miles on it. So we decided just to do it proper. So we're going through that, put it back to stock, maybe a few performance modifications like a cam and uh, big pistons, and, but just not too much, not gonna make it crazy. Uh, obviously we're gonna sandblast everything and do it up, do it upright. Do, this is gonna be a frame off because the car is in pretty good shape. We've I got the engine now at Ed Pink's engine shop. You know, Ed Pink does all those uh, Singer motors, you know, for the Singer Porsches. So he's been rebuilding that uh, six cylinder engine for us, doing the cam and everything. Hopefully we'll get maybe about 250 horsepower, I'm hoping. Uh, we'll hook that to the Tremec five speed. And I think this will be just a fun, sporty, good handling car when we're done. So we're getting there, we're getting there. The real sort of bugaboo on these engines were these the rocker arms, okay? They wore, and they wore excessively. So oil pressure was kept low, so it didn't put too much pressure on the cam, and they just wore out. This is an original one. Uh, when we rebuilt this motor, we had these made, and these are just beautiful, out of tool steel. We had them hardened, and then we used something called DLC, diamond-like coating. This has been around in the engine for quite a while, and you, it's not a wear mark anywhere. This way we can bring the oil pressure up a bit uh, and uh, this engine should last a long, long time. I mean, you can see the wear on the original piece, but uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, these are just, just beautiful. Look at these. We had these all custom made, so I'm real excited to get this thing going and fire it up. You know, I always liked the Firebird. I thought it was better looking than the other GM uh, bodies, you know, the Camaro or any of those. And Pontiac had a reputation of being a better handling car than some of the other GM divisions. So that's why I always liked this. And you didn't see this everywhere. Camaros were everywhere. Camaro versus Mustang. Rarely was it Firebird. Firebird was always the, you know, um, kind of the second after, after the Camaro. So I, that's what I liked about it. It's the right color. What else have we done? We put 15 inch wheels, originally came with 14s. We put Willwood disc brakes all the way around. My friend John Hotchkiss, the Hotchkiss suspension, he makes everything for this car, which made it so easy. I'm so used to doing stuff like that Talbot Lago or weird Bugattis or Duesenbergs where there just aren't any parts. Everything is available for this car. As I mentioned, year one had everything. Just, I'd like a new interior for a 68 Fire. Yeah, no problem. And every single piece, you're not, combing through eBay looking for little bits and pieces. Everything is available. The thing that I love the most is the hood tack. You know, it was funny. Growing up in New England and Massachusetts, uh, anyone that I saw was always oh, probably four or five years old. And what happened was condensation would get in here and make it cloudy. And when you sat behind the wheeler in the passenger, you really couldn't see the tack because, it, well, like I said, because of condensation. Uh, that was always a problem. To put a brand new one on and fix it and get it restored properly, it's really great. I even like it better than the heads up display. It, it's really cool to sit behind the wheel and see the tack outside the car. It's just one of those neat things. This has got the Tremec 5 speed in it, that uh, TKX, I believe it's called, which is a terrific transmission because the shifter location is adjustable. You can move it where you want it. We'll put this up on the lift and we'll show you what I'm talking about. Originally, it had the Borg Warner. A four speed, which was the same as the Corvettes of the period. This also had the fold down rear seat, which I think is pretty cool and make it kind of a two seater deal. Uh, that's pretty neat. Normally, I don't get convertibles, it's something about this car. And people go nuts. They wave and they see it on the freeway. This seems to bring back all sorts of memories for people. But the fun part is when you go to a cruise night or a cars and coffee, and people go, Oh, you put this on, right? I go, No, 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 it's, it's overhead cam. What? And then you show them the engine and they look at you like, okay, this is like some comedy reality car show, right? No, no, that, but they only did that engine for a couple of years. It just was not hugely successful. But there is a, a club, which is great, the Overhead Cam Club. Uh, they've got a newsletter and everything and they'll, they'll give me all the information you need on these things. So uh, if, if you've got one of these, check into that. Uh, as I said, the new interior, 
We might a tonneau cover. Yeah, I, I've kept the body completely stock. Uh, it's just this handling package makes all the difference in the world. I mean, it's amazing how nice this car drives. And you know, the fun part is, it's the only car I have where the engine doesn't overpower the chassis. You know, a lot of times when you get cars from this era, you put these big motors in, 400, 500, 700 horsepower, and they over, this, you can use all the power all the time. You just keep your foot in it. And is it real fast? No, no, but it's certainly fast enough. And it's certainly as fast as an XKE from the period, which is what I think John DeLorean was trying to, uh, trying to do. You know, the, uh, the Jaguar said it had 265 horsepower, but whenever you put one on the dyno, it always came out at 215, 220, 225, which is exactly what this is. Um, since we put those, um, our, our own rocker arms in there, uh, we put the oil pressure up a little bit so we don't have that problem anymore. So you could rev this thing all the way to 5,500, all the way to 5,500, and, and it's fine. Come on, let's take it next door. I'll put it up on the lift and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here's the car in our sterile Coney Dev. Before I put it up in the air, I want to show you something here in the trunk. Have you seen these weights in the rear here? There's another one on this side. I guess they're filled with lead or something. I guess they're there to cancel out any harmonic imbalance. They're very, <laughs> very heavy. Um, so, uh, again, I I'd love to hear from uh, Somebody is more familiar with that than I am. But uh, I guess that's what they do. They're just there to, to kind of to balance it, I guess. You know, Packard used to have something like that in the old, on the end of each bumper, they would fill with some fluid and it would, it would uh, help to, uh, well, cancel out the harmonic imbalance. All right, but, oh, anyway, how's that stupid spare? That's the original spare. They didn't work then, they don't work now. The dopey tire inflators, but hey. Come on, let's put it up in the air and see what she does. All right, let's start at the front of the vehicle. Let me tell you about that Hotchkiss Sport Suspension. You got uh, the Sport upper and lower A-arms, as you can see. Up in there, you got the uh, Sport coil springs and the adjustable sway bars as well. Uh, and the back, we've got this Sport leaf springs. Did I mention the four barrel on this is not a quadrajet, it's the um, Edelbrock. There's our headers right there. Well, headers are there we go. It's about there. Oh, and of course the uh, steering box too. We've got, that's, that really makes all the difference. This car steers and drives so nicely. And the cool thing about all this stuff is it bolts right up. Um, you know, if it sounds like an ad for Hotchkiss, it's not supposed to because we do pay for our stuff. But you know, when suppliers are good and it works, I think you, you, you should support them. You know, it drives the bad people out and the good people in. You know, um, you got the subframe connectors there. That steering box, we're back up there again. Can you get a shot up, up there? Uh, what is that, 12 to 1? 12 to 1 ratio, whatever. Uh, you got the chassis brace underneath here. Take a look at that, okay. And you got the machine tie rod sleeves as well. Uh, you know, we run radial tires on this, and radial tires uh, increase the caster to, to increase, I guess, the grip, right? You know, stock suspension, even the reproduction stuff, doesn't work with, doesn't work with, um, radial tires because of the suspension geometry. We kept the stock rear end ratio on this, which I think, uh, as I remember, oh, and of course, Hotchkiss suspension, there we go there, the shocks. And there's our Willwood disc brakes on all four wheels. 
You know, the fun thing is you take something like this, which is a six cylinder, and you make a great handling car out of it, and the power is secondary. Most cars of this period, it's that straight line power, and then you're sort of bobbing and weaving in the corners, whereas with this thing, it's the exact opposite. You use all the power all the time. Is it fast? Yeah, it's reasonably quick, but it's certainly not fast like a 389 would be in it or a big 400, but it handles so much better. You just sort of, you, you, you can bring it, it's, I, I can't describe it. You'll, you'll see it when we drive it. You, you know, the steering box right there, it just makes it so nice. It's so precise. You move your hand in the slightest and immediately responds. And this brace right here, that gives you some uh, tightening up a bit. And those, those are the sport leaf springs as well. Now this all works really good. I'm quite pleased with this and I, I thank John Hotchkiss and of course uh, Year One and all these guys for making this stuff available that we can save these cars. Come on, let's uh, put it on the ground and we'll take it for a ride. I gotta say, this is one of the easiest restorations we've done because everything is available. That's what's, it just made, I'm so used to scrounging for parts and everything fits. You know, this Firebird is like the quintessential California car. I mean, I was looking for a coupe, but I'm so glad I got this convertible because I really enjoy it. And it's not about the power, it's just about the handling. You, you put your foot in it, it goes pretty good, it's fine. That's kind of a different sound. I almost always like the first generation of any new car. First generation Mustang, first generation Camaro, first generation Firebird. They seem to get it right the first time. Then after that, they get bigger. It's like the Mini Cooper, when it came out, oh, it's the perfect set. Now the, the big thing with four doors, it's huge. Although I give credit to uh, Dodge. You know, the Challenger body has not changed in, in what is it, probably 12, 13 years, but they keep refining it, making it a little bit better. Oh, I just realized when it was up on the lip, I forgot to point out the uh, Tremec transmission. You know, this thing just shifts so nicely. You know, the funny thing is you buy old cars with 70, 80, 100,000 miles on them, and they shift okay sometimes, but it's not that crispness you get with a brand new transmission. And that's what I love about this thing. You know, it pretty much bolted right in, uh, looks stock. Well, the shift is a little bit different, a little thicker. Uh, but, ugh, it's such a pleasure to shift it. I just enjoy upshifting and downshifting. With the six, you do a lot of shifting, believe me. And the five speed really makes it because you can cruise it fairly high highway speed, 75, 80, no problem. When I got this car, it had about 90 something thousand miles on it. Uh, and now this engine's been completely rebuilt and with those new rock arms, I don't think we'll have any problems for a long, long time. Yeah, you know, cut to me stuck by the side of the road. But no, I don't. I think uh, I, I use this thing to run around and go to work every day. It's really great. It's just a wonderful car. And people seem to get a kick out of it because it looks 100% stock. I really believe the 15-inch wheels, they should have done that from the factory in the beginning because it fills out the wheel well nicely. And I wanted to use the Pontiac wheels. So I didn't want to put, you know, American mags or something on it. You know, that chassis bracing, you really can't feel it, especially if you There's no flexing in this, no creaking when you go around corners. Everything's tight, everything's exact. No brake fade, stops, boom, like that. And it's amazing what a difference radial tires make on a car. You know, I've got a, a 37 Cord, and that had just some kind of bias ply on it. And I thought it handled poorly just because of the design that it was, that it was front wheel drive. Then I put a set of radials on it, balanced them. Oh my God, it was like a brand new car. I mean, I couldn't believe how nicely it rode and drove. I love looking at that hood tack. It just makes me laugh. 
Just pin the tack every time you drive it. It's fun. And the six, of course, is a little lighter than the V8, so I think that makes a difference too in the handling. But the great thing is with the aftermarket, you not only make these cars like new, you make them better than new. I mean, this stops better, it handles better. Uh, I mean, everything is just better, and, it's, and it still looks stock. Uh, the rest of modernness is so slight, Edelbrock is at a quadrajet, you know, little things like that, all the, the steering box, suspension pieces. But visually, it looks the same. perfect road with this thing. It really does handle like a sports car. I know that sounds silly, but don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, John DeLorean is the guy who really turned Pontiac Motor Division around. It's a shame. I don't know if you saw that uh, Netflix documentary framing John DeLorean. I didn't watch it because I thought, oh, framing John DeLorean like he was framed. You know, I, I, to me, anybody can get caught with 10 kilos of coke. I, I, but then it turned out that wasn't the case, and then it turned out uh, he did some pretty unsavory things. You know, and it's a classic case of when, I don't know whether it's good people do bad things or bad people do good things, or whatever you want to call it, but he was extremely successful. He could have done so much more without forging documents and trying to pull scams and, uh, you know, it, it's a shame. He had some good ideas. The DeLorean car was was not one of them. I mean, the basic idea was pretty good, but, you know, I'm always amazed when I see people that say, oh, the big three were afraid of him. And you don't sell that many stainless steel gold wing door cars. Most people don't want gold wing door cars. You'll always sell a few. And it's a shame, a brilliant guy, a great engineer. It's very sad the way it turned out, but he did some great things for Pontiac Motor Division. I gotta give him credit there. You know, in Europe, they don't have the same disdain for the six cylinder that we do. You know, it's always like that commercial. You could have had a V8. That's why people like the V8, but it's just so different and unusual. When you get among enthusiasts, they have all kinds of questions about them. I mean, I've seen this with Weber carburetors and all sorts of trick stuff done to them. It would have been fun to see if they had developed a dual overhead cam setup like the Jag. That would have been great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down uh, memory lane. Uh, maybe this is a piece of uh, GM history you didn't know about. So if you learned something, that's great. And I hope you found it entertaining. It's certainly fun to drive, and uh, if you're thinking of using any of those pieces I, that I talked about, whether it's Year One or, or, or uh, Tremec or, or uh, Willwood, couldn't recommend them higher. See you guys next week. Thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs>